Hi, welcome to Conversations with Carissa. I am starting a series on health and wellness and I wanted to come to you guys now to talk to you about one of the interviews that I did recently. Um, I interviewed a up and coming new author. Her name is Jessie Apollo and she has written a book about starting your urban garden the right way. You guys, you have got to get this book and I want you all to get it uh, for what you get it for yourself and other people as well you know with Christmas time and shopping getting ready to start this will be a perfect uh, stocking stuffer so please get this it's it comes in hardback and it also comes in paperback as well and I interviewed her a few weeks ago and I'm sure I'm gonna share that interview with you in a few minutes after I get finished this little uh, lead in so I want you guys I keep pumping and pressing you guys to buy this book she talks to you about she shows you and teaches you about the ins and outs on gardening uh, in small spaces and large spaces so there are no excuses so this the, one of the segments is going to be about wellness and eating right and you know there's just so much stuff that they're putting in food these days and the great thing about it is you can grow your own food you guys you can do that and it's not that hard it just requires some uh, some attention so i hope you guys will enjoy this interview and if i hadn't said it yet i need you guys to like share and subscribe to the channel all right i'm trying to grow it so please do that okay and i'll be right back welcome back to conversations with carissa Joining me is Carlicia Gillespie, also known as Jessie Apollo. Also known as her cousin. And she's my cousin, you guys. <laughs> she's my cousin. So I, I am so glad to have you on my show. This is perfect timing. We, um, I am doing a series on health and wellness, and this fits in perfect with the wellness portion of the series okay and um i got so many i'm so excited you guys i got so many questions i want to ask jesse but the first and main question i want to ask is where did jesse apollo come from <laughs> my mm -hmm. goodness so many people ask me that question mm -hmm. so believe it or not i have a puppy whose parents his Mother's name is Jesse. Mm -hmm. His father's name is Apollo. And I was like, I love those two names. Why not marry them and have it as a pen name? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it too. Um, when you said, when you announced that you were, you just wrote a book and it's out, I was so excited. I was so excited. And then when I went to look for the book, you gave the name and then you gave Jesse Apollo. And I was like, is this the right book? Is this the right book? And then when we talked and you and you explained to me how you, how you came up with mm -hmm. it, but this was I, I love it. I love the name. Period. Um, the name of the book is "Start Your Urban Gardening the Right Way," and what it is, it is a beginner step by step guide to uh, growing a affordable, space efficient organic high yield vegetable and herb garden this book is full of so much information now jesse said that you know it says that it's for, for beginners but i think people who have been gardening for years definitely can use this book as well um, the book is full of all kinds of information from the lighting, how to properly plant when you're planting ground, when you're doing ground planting and when you're planting in planters. Um, she also uh, tells you the ins and out, the do's and the don'ts. Um, I have a lot of don'ts that I've done that we're going to see this shortly. Um, Jesse is going to give us a demonstration of how to plant seeds. She's also going to teach us how to, um, when you have like a vegetables for starters, uh, the, you, when you get the seeds, rather than throwing those seeds away, you can, you can replant those seeds. So she's, she's going to give us a demonstration on um, 
walk us through the process. Let's put it that way. She's going to walk us through the process. So, but before I want to, I have a few more questions I want to ask her. Um, what encouraged you to write the book about gardening? <clears throat> well, you know, with COVID going on, mm -hmm. everyone was stuck at home. Yes. Me too. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the grocery store was a little challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and this gave me an opportunity to slow down um, and just reflect on life and what has happened. And you know what? I started thinking about our grandfather yes. who used to garden all the time. Yeah. And my parents used to garden mm -hmm. all the time, even though I hated getting out there and in the sun and the dirt and all that yeah. wonderful stuff. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, you know what? You just need to go back to the basics. Yes. You know, and it really helped with mental health, mm -hmm. um, really helped you know, uh, just exercise. Exercise yes. was so important. Um, and like I said, the mental health part, but just digging in the dirt yes. and, you know, watching vegetables grow, it was, you know, a, a great experience. And I just, I forgot that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you get older, you understand, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I can actually do it. So I, after all my trial and errors, because you're going to right. experience that right. as a beginner, mm -hmm. I learned uh, a lot of different things, mm -hmm. you know, do's, don'ts, pros, cons. And I figured, you know what? Other people can do this. Talking right. to friends and other people. The number one fear is I have a, a black thumb. No, you don't. No, you don't. You just need the proper guidance and learn to ask for help. I think a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. I'm asking for help, y'all. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I am asking for help. Yes, our, our grandparents were definitely, they had a very nice size garden. And I was out there picking potatoes and beans and watermelon and collard greens. <laughs> And collard oh, greens, yes. um, and mustard the, greens. Yucky rutabagas. Whew. Oh, girl, them rutabagas are good. You just mm -mm. got to know how to cook them. Mm -mm. Them rutabagas were really good. But, <laughs> yes, we grew up on, we grew up on, um, as, as we can say, organic. Now, we call it or, fresh food back then, but yes. they call it organic food now. It's organic. Yes, it, yes. So we grew up on that. And it is, it tastes so different from... What you're getting in the store now, yeah. what you're getting in the store now. So starting your urban gardening the right way, this is the book to get. Um, like I said, when it, it, she goes, goes through a lot of examples in the book. She tells you what lighting, all of that information, um, how to space your, um, your seeds, from me, apart from each other. She just kind of really go into detail of everything and why if say for instance if your your plants or have a disease or what have you, she talks about why um, or if you're overwatering and or underwatering why your uh, vegetables or your herbs are not growing properly. So all of this information is in here. This is a like I said is a very detailed book and you will never go wrong by purchasing this book because like I said I'm excited uh, Jesse is going to show me the proper way to maintain y'all I'm telling y'all when you see this look I'm so embarrassed I'm so embarrassed but you know what asking for help and she said ask for help that's right and this is this is what she's here for so I have a few more questions I want to ask before we get into the demonstration. So the next question would, I want to ask is for someone starting a garden for the first time, what would be the easiest plant to grow or herb? Well, um, my favorite are bell peppers. Those are very mm -hmm. easy to grow. Tomatoes yeah, are, that. Yes, mm -hmm. are easy to grow. Um, and people kind of overlook herbs. Herbs are easy to grow, okay. like your basil, like mm -hmm. your rosemary, 
um, mint. Okay. Uh, yeah, just those, yeah. those, and there are several others, and I lay them out in, mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. um, but those are good starters. Okay. Um, and you know what? There's nothing like going out and picking your own herbs yes. to come back in and chop up and cook mm -hmm. with. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Now, you can get some fresh herbs at the grocery store, but it's, it's not like your own. You I've know? never bought uh, fresh herbs from the grocery store. Really? I never bought it. I had a a basil plant that I had out there. It, I would just go out there and rub on it, and then I would use use it to cook as well. But I just never bought herbs from the mm. store. Yeah, um, they do sell them, but again, don't know what they were spread, you right. know, sprayed with. Mm -hmm. Don't know how far they traveled. Mm -hmm. um, so you have some at home. You don't have to travel far, That's right. and you know what you've sprayed it with if you have to. Um, you can grow them inside or outside, yes. you know, so easy peasy. Yes. Okay, so my next question would be, um, which planter should you use when planting? Should you use a planter that has holes or without a hole? Definitely with a hole. Okay. Yes, you want that um, holes in there to mm -hmm. allow for drainage mm -hmm. out of your soil. You don't want your root system to be sitting in soil that causes okay. root rot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not healthy for a plant at all. Okay. So I, I think that's where I went wrong with it. That lemon plant. I, it doesn't have a hole in it. You oh. guys will see it shortly. Um, okay. So that's good to know. I know, I know, mm. but that's good to know. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so my next question is, when transferring plants indoors from out, transferring from, the, from outside to indoors, um, will that shock the plant? No, that okay. will not shock your plant okay. unless you are trying to take it from one pot to another. Okay. And, and then in that case, what you wanna do is make sure you don't disturb the roots as much as possible. Okay. Leave some of that soil around there, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to shock it a little bit, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be so bad that it won't recover. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So don't just shake the, the the old dirt off and then just plant it. Ooh, no. Okay. No. Okay. No, well, no. see, I needed to know this because <laughs> I was getting ready to mess up again. I was getting ready to mess it up again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. We got you. We okay. got you. <laughs> okay. So uh, my next question is, um, what causes mushrooms to grow in your soil? And is it harmful to your plant? Well, what causes mushrooms to grow? Mm -hmm. um, mushroom spores are already in your soil. Okay. Now, that just depends on, let me retract. They are in your soil if that's what whomever back that soil allowed mm, okay but uh, mushroom spores can also travel in the air and in water droplets to get over into your soil okay the good news is they are not harmful to the plants at mm -hmm. all matter of fact it is a symbiotic relationship so they're mm -hmm. actually a sign of the ecosystem in your soil doing well mm -hmm. so okay. you don't have to worry about that at all okay so when you say a symbi symbiotic um relationship, relationship uh that's to either to the soil or to the plant to the plant to the plant yes okay. because it is feeding it nutrients too oh yes okay so i've been i've been plucking them suckers out of mine do not so pluck it's them. okay it's quite all right okay <laughs> okay yeah because i had i it was in my tomato plant and mm. yeah it was in my tomato plant and okay. then it was in some other uh plants okay i i had too and i just i didn't know whether it was going to harm it so that's why you i've been plucking out. them out and, and it's okay um either or Okay. But um, you don't have to worry about them harming the plant at all. Okay. Um, so I guess there are some mushrooms around here that sent their spores out, and they Ooh. just so happen to get into your pot. Okay. And that's quite all right. Okay, well, that makes me feel better. Now, I'll leave them alone. Yes, leave them alone. <laughs> okay, so, and my last question is, how often should you feed your plants? And would it be best, uh, and what is the best product to use? Well, that all depends on um, 
your preferences of what brand to use. Okay. Um, the schedule of feeding, again, also depends on what type of vegetable that you're growing okay. because each vegetable has a different feeding schedule. Mm. So you're going to have to follow the directions of if you're growing seeds, mm -hmm. make sure you're following the feeding schedule on okay. the seed package okay. or the little carts that they have down in mm -hmm. seedlings mm -hmm. should tell you how often to water as well. Um, also, what you really want to pay attention to in whatever soil you have is the nutrients NPK, which okay. stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay. Yes. And I spell that all okay. out in the, in the soil book. chapter. Yes. Okay, great. Great, yeah. great. Okay. So everything we're covering now and more is in this book. So just keep that in mind. I may be grazing over some questions, but there are a lot more questions that are addressed in the book. And um, so, like I say, I keep, I keep telling you guys to get it. Please get it, get it, get it, get it. So we're going to, um, those are all the questions that I have. So um, Jesse is going to show us how to do the seedlings. She has um, a... I have an orange bell pepper, pepper, which I am going to show you the proper way to harvest the seeds. Okay. Yes. What do now is show you how to harvest your seeds from a bell pepper. Okay. This is one of my favorite vegetables of all time. Okay. It's delicious. So I must say, give credit where credit is due. My husband actually showed me how the, I won't say the proper way, but an easier way to cut open a bell pepper. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to cut off just the top half of this bell pepper. Mm -hmm. Yep, top half, boom. So it makes it flat mm -hmm. completely. And if you cook with them, save that top, because okay. that's still good. So what you're gonna do is cut in the seams. Mm -hmm. Oops, don't cut myself, I need those fingers. It smells good, y'all. Ooh, it smells so good. Yeah, make sure that cut meets, and then you do the other side. And once again, making sure they meet. And oh. just and I just want to let you guys know that this is from her garden. Yes. So see, when you peel them away, wow! You peel all oh, the seeds. look at that. Wow. So you might still have some from a little shaking of it, but yeah. for the most part, you have all of your seeds. So now you have seeds galore. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do now, this is important. If you are going to plant right away, mm -hmm. it's okay. You don't have to dry them out. Oh. But if you are going to store your seeds, mm -hmm. you need to put them on a... Um, a paper towel okay. and store them in a dark place. Okay. Okay. Um, for about a week. And then okay. you want to put them in something like an envelope or whatever mm -hmm. and keep them in a dark place. Okay. I've done that. Um, uh, let's see how long have I, I've had my seeds stored for about two years. And mm. the ones I planted earlier this year were those seeds. Wow. Yep. 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 So this is what you want to do. Just take your thumbs mm -hmm. and run them over the seeds mm -hmm. and they'll pop everywhere but you just have to clean those up okay so then there you go so you have the beautiful thing about bell peppers they give you tons of seeds so you can propagate them all the time mm -hmm. wow yeah so um, so right now, if I want to, to plant those seeds now, I can do it. And that's what we're going to do. All right. We're going to do this and I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. I'll make okay. sure I get all, I'll try to get all my little seeds out of there. If not, that's okay. Um, yep. And you can just toss that. Mm -hmm. 
So now here are all of our seeds. Oops, sorry for the noise. All right, let me just do that with my fingers. And always when you're scraping something, always mm -hmm. use the back side of your knife mm -hmm. so you won't ruin the sharpness. Okay. Okay, so there you go. You have tons of seeds. So um, if you wanna, like I said, if you wanna keep them and have them for a while, just put them on a a, oh, wow. a napkin for about a week in a dark place mm -hmm. and that will dry them out. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to plant some of them. All right, so, well, I'm excited. I'm ready, y'all. <laughs> I'm ready. So this is what we're going to plant them in since we have um, seeds. Mm -hmm. This is what you're, we're going to plant in, and this is going to propagate and help them grow mm -hmm. into seedlings. Okay. So. Go ahead. So this is, what type of container is this? This is actually, and I've recycled uh, an egg cart. Okay, okay. So it's the simplest thing. I don't have to go out and purchase anything else. Mm -hmm. This is just perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the top off okay. in that crevice, and we're going to take this and sit it over it in this one so okay. it serves as a um a cover no 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 mm -hmm. no it's going to serve as a uh, saucer to catch your water when you um, spray down your seeds as i was showing earlier the um, the egg container mm -hmm. i've cut the top off mm -hmm. and we're going to use the top to be a saucer for the bottom half okay. to capture the water. Wow. So what you're going to do now is, and I'm gonna use my little uh, spade here so I won't have to stick my finger in, but we're just gonna put a little, I'm sorry, I wanna, wanna show you guys this. So let me move my seeds up a little bit. So I'm, you're gonna, Create a little bitty hole right here, not very deep, just something small. Okay. In each section, just a little small. And I've um, filled these. Uh, and this is potting soil okay. that I fill this with. Okay. So again, it has the nutrients they need: the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay. So now. You know what? I'm going to let you do this. Okay. Does it matter how many seeds you put in each container? Yes. You're going to put one seed in each pocket. Okay. All right. So All right. just to speed this up, I'm going to drop yeah, that. Right. Yep. I'm going to drop one right there. The next thing we want to do, because we want them warm, mm -hmm. but we want them to get sunlight when they germinate, mm -hmm. we're going to take a plastic bag, okay, and we're going to cut it in half like so. This is fun, y'all. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, uh, she got these heavy-duty, great uh -oh. plastic. No, this is great. <laughs> this is great. It's going to keep your seeds warm. And this is um, going to create that warm greenhouse effect okay. for you. So I've always wanted a greenhouse. And I'm going to eventually get that greenhouse, a small greenhouse. Yep, yep. It'll be nice in the backyard. Yes. Am I tinting this right? Do we need, you know what? If I do that to it, that should be good enough. Okay. So. I'm going to leave it like this because we're, we don't have the other side of mm -hmm. the egg carton. Okay. But what we're going to do is, Carissa is going to find a nice, um, sunny windowsill mm -hmm. to put yes. this in to keep her bell pepper seeds warm. Mm -hmm. Or, if she doesn't, she is going to go and find a grow light. Um, yeah, okay. this is a grow light. Um, it is, uh, 
simulating the sun, mm -hmm. different wavelengths, and you can find the, these on Amazon, mm -hmm. Walmart, those different places. And I've listed some good places in the book in the resources okay. section of Great. where you can get a grow light and the type of grow lights you want to get. But you turn it on. Wow. And voila, you have wow. your sun. And you want to make sure that your seeds have at least 6 to 12 hours of light. Wow. So with this, I have a programmable grow light. Okay. So I can program it to, let's see, if I do six hours, mm -hmm. um, I'll just, you know, click the timing and it will flash in the little button there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Oh, no, let me move those. It'll flash here showing that it is ready to be programmable. So whatever time you want to start mm -hmm. the light, just hold it down until okay. the light starts blinking and then it will shut off. Okay. Six or 12, however long you have it set, so. Okay, so I noticed that it's different colors. It's mm -hmm. red and blue. Mm -hmm. It's not like the regular light that I thought you could use. Right. What's the difference? And can you use regular light? You can, okay. but um, it won't be as good as the grow light mm -hmm. or the sun. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't want to be too overly technical here, okay. but these lights, like I said, are, they simulate the sun. And okay. these wavelengths are what plants respond to. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I pretty much explain that at a basic level in the book so um in the are you using do you have enough light chapter you'll be able to see that okay yeah now to purchase a light like this and with beginners and just kind of starting off we're looking at what about a price range would oh. be a decent wow well they range all the way from twelve dollars oh to four or five hundred dollars okay and that depends on how large mm -hmm. and whether you're going to use um, a big platform because they have them um, to the point where there are different shelves okay and they're vertical growers and the top has a light mm -hmm. and they basically do the same thing but since mm -hmm. I have such a small space to work with mm -hmm. these two grow lights Okay. work well for me okay. and let me just show you one other um what this grow light is helping me grow right now okay it is this these are my lemon trees i started these from organic lemon seeds mm -hmm. and they basically live up under my grow lights wow. for the majority of the day mm -hmm. it um has a tray under the bottom mm -hmm. and this is just a regular um, this was a spinach container okay. and when the spinach was out I just you know cut the top off and voila this too had a um, had a, a greenhouse effect with plastic bags mm -hmm. the thing though with with these scents um, they're getting large enough mm -hmm. and they need their own space and nutrients I'm gonna transplant them into their own individual containers. Okay. Now it's gonna take some time for these to grow, to grow. and start producing, but mm -hmm. um, we'll see. And this was actually an experiment for me. Oh, wow. So I, I love experiments. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was trained as an engineer, went to school for engineering, and um, I just love science. Yes. I love you know, experiments, so mm -hmm. this is one of my experiments okay so, yeah so i'll give you another lemon tree one you gotta give me one yes oh my goodness yes so oh see. wow okay so jesse is going to help me with the lemon tree that i just oh my goodness <laughs> it's just it's, it's okay. a hot mess so um, she's going to help me, show me how to kind of salvage it, salvage it. I'm bringing it from the outside in, and um, as she explained before, I'm not supposed to take the soil out completely. Right. 
and because you have potting soil in there already yes. what you're going to do is um uh you're going to add some additional potting soil to mm -hmm. it and she's also going to feed it because i wasn't feeding it right you can't it won't feed you if you don't feed it so um, we're going to just add some potting soil to it because I see some of your roots are exposed and we don't want that. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to bring it over to and let the, actually we're going to, we're going to pan over to that section. But before we pan over, another question I want to ask, can you take, if you want a lemon tree like this and you want to combine the two plants to make it fuller, is that good or bad? I wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, because, like I said, they all need their own space. Okay. Um, and it's kind of, you know, you don't want that. They they're on a different growth okay, cycle. Okay, and they're probably fighting yeah, for they will nu be, nutrients. And right. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so okay. that's why these um, they need their own containers now. Okay. They're they're tall enough, big enough, and I see I have one right here whose leaves are not. Um, as dark as that so mm -hmm. that it definitely their time it's time for them to be separated and mm -hmm. um, fed with some proper um, citrus okay. tree feeder okay okay so this is the lemon tree that my cousin has presented me with and I know you probably can't see her soil but her potting soil is a couple of things your potting soil is not covering your roots very well. So that's one thing. We need to get that soil covering up to about right there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, have you pruned this? I hope you haven't. No. Okay, good. You haven't pruned it yet. Um, but we're not going to worry about pruning it right now since we got to help it get back to a, a healthier way except for I'm going to prune this off because it is dead and that one's dead mm -hmm. oh. um, but that is okay it's okay because you're going to you're going to have to prune this uh, at least once a year okay um, but we're going to again fill up the soil to cover your roots mm -hmm. and we're going to feed it okay but do not feed it during the fall or winter season because it's going to go dormant. Okay. Okay. So beginning of spring, mm -hmm. you're going to buy some. I buy citrus sticks that feed citrus trees. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to break them mm -hmm. and you're going to place them to the edge of your pot mm -hmm. because they need to be further away from the roots. Okay. So it can spread out and, and get to it. The other thing I want to show you about this tree is it's growing little stickers. Mm -hmm. um, and what it's doing is trying to protect itself oh, wow. from um, different elements mm -hmm. like, um, like pest. Okay. So things like aphids and other bugs, they like to get on your plant and mm. suck the, the sap out of the leaves mm. and it that is a detriment to them okay um and the other thing about aphids since they are sucking the sap out and leaving some there mm -hmm. ants love sap from aphids okay so they will protect the aphids from um being you know, swept away, brushed away, or whatever. And, so, and you say aphids? Yes. Okay. Yes, they are aphids. There are a lot of kind of aphids, but the ones that I see most here in Georgia are the uh, white aphids. Okay, so those are little small. Can you see those? They're really small bugs? Mm -hmm, but you can still see them. Oh. And they like to live the, on the underside of leaves. Okay. Um, it protects them from, you know, rain and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But when you are trying to combat them and they, if you get a bad infestation, it is really hard to get rid of. Okay. But you definitely want to make sure they, you go under each leaf and pull them out okay. or spray them with a hard jet of water. Okay. Or what I do is I mix a um, bit of... Um, 
100% cold pressed neem oil okay. um, or some uh, a drop or two of dishwashing soap and, and some water okay. and I spray my lemon trees at least once a week. Okay. This will smother the aphids and huh. prevent others to come in. Okay. Or you can buy ladybugs, which I unfortunately did, and my ladybugs flew away the next day. So they were basically useless, useless. to me. Okay. Okay. Um, but I have to admit that I did not buy them any place to live mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. I thought that, you know, since it was a buffet of aphids, they were going to stay and eat. Stay. Okay. They were okay. like, no, they're okay. not. The other thing that she is going to do is buy another pot for it. Okay. You're so let's hold the... it up just in case. Yes. Okay. She's going to buy another pot. Let me see. Yes, because this pot has no drainage. Oh. Or, so, okay, because it doesn't have a, a drainage, I've got to get it out of this pot. Or okay. you can amend the pot by sticking holes on the at the side, bottom, on the the side. Of, okay. uh, yeah, or the bottom. Okay. But what you'll need is a saucer to okay. catch that water, okay. especially because she will be bringing in this pot for the fall and winter. Um, and I say that because we are in a grow zone which cannot, um, which this plant cannot tolerate during the fall and winter times because it gets so cold here. Mm -hmm. um, they only do well in a grow zone below grow zone eight, um, basically like Florida, like parts of California okay. and places like that. They, you can plant these in the ground and they'll do well. But here, not so much. Okay. Okay. So let's pan over to this beautiful, gorgeous, voila, lemon plant, uh, tree. So I actually have another um, lemon tree, but I, it was, you know, a little leggy, so okay. it would have been a little bit more difficult to transport, but, um, I'm going to amend my soil, meaning I'm going to add some additional soil okay. um, to it because, you know, after a while, you know, your soil kind of leaks out mm -hmm. of the holes or whatnot. So I'm going to add some soil and also add another stick of uh, my um, citrus plant okay. uh, feeder. And uh, I'll begin th these plants. My plants will come in. Um, matter of fact, you are supposed to bring in your lemon plants when, uh, before the temperature gets to freezing temperature. Okay. Okay. So they'll stay in, uh, the house near a well-lit window. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can take them out when the temperature gets warmer steadily and there are at least 50 and above, 50 okay. degrees Fahrenheit. Um, what I do also with my plant after it's finished with its bloom and I've, you know, harvested off the lemons, I will prune these legs. Always prune. Um, and you can see some places where, you, yes, yeah, yes. where I, I prune. Um, I try to get rid of the leggy, meaning the little skinny um, branches, mm -hmm. just so that it can start propagating and growing again. Now, I really wanted my tree to be a little bit taller, but since it has been in a pot for so long and um, it only has this size to spread out its roots and things like that, I'm going to leave them uh, in their containers for as long as I, I can. So um, I'd spray this tree down again with my, my aphid repellent uh, mixture and I've done um, it is done really well for this particular plant I don't have um, I didn't have any aphid problems or any of the other pests that uh, lemon trees are you know subject to mm -hmm. so again that's one of the items I discuss in the book are um, pests and diseases that will grab your vegetables so definitely 
pay that attention. It's going to um, give you some great tips on uh, how to combat them organically. Okay. Yeah. And this, this liver tree is just so green, and I hope it's coming in, it's showing up pretty good, but it is, oh. it's healthy. Maybe if I get my yellow self oh, out of okay. the background, or maybe not. Actually, if you stand right there, you can <laughs> see it real good. And how many lemons did, does, does this liver tree harvest? Well, I can get about 10 lemons off of here, especially if I protect the flowers. Okay. The blooms are going to turn into the lemons. Okay. So um, this one I'll probably get, you know, maybe eight to ten, and the other one I'll probably get the same. Okay. And I'll, you know, it's nice. They yeah. are really, and the cool thing about Myers lemons, they are actually a hybrid lemon. They're not okay. exactly, you know, lemon lemons like you find mm. the ones in the grocery store. Okay. I, they are, they are um, hybrid or genetically. Um, what do you call it? Oranges? Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like a lemon orange hybrid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I thought but that's that was good. Really cool. That's yep. good. Yeah. Yep. Really cool. So I like it. And so one more, if you, for our beginners, um, having like the tools. Um, ah, yes, yes, yes. The spades, the forks where you can dig in the ground. Um, also, uh, any weeds you might have um, in your raised beds, you definitely want to um, use your tool here, um, your spade here to dig up your dirt. Um, and I have another one that actually has the, um, the length. It has a measurement on it so it can show you you can see that show you the depth that you are planting um, your seeds or your seedlings so very useful very handy um, but let me tell you the cool thing I absolutely love this you don't necessarily have to go out and buy these tools okay you have them in your kitchen all right so a fork can definitely replace that your spade, guess what? A spoon. spoon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And weeding, I'm sure there's something out there I haven't quite figured out. The barbecue. Uh, there you go. The barbecue. You. The barbecue uh, tool oh, or whatever yeah. you call it. You exactly. Yes, She's you getting it. Look That's at right. my little gardener. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm so, getting it. Exactly. So, um, as I always believe, and I am subject to myself, is finding anything that I can grow in um, container wise. I even okay. use the container from my cat's litter. Oh. Once it was um, all the litters out, I wash it out really well, mm -hmm. rinse it out really well, and I you know, put holes around yes. it, fill it with my potting soil, okay. and put my seeds or whatever over in there. And that's what I did this year with my, um, my peppers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, really well, really well. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I hope you guys got a lot of information that you could take away so that you can start your urban garden the right way. And as I said, I'm going to link this book in the description box along with uh, her uh, social network information as well. So please, please get this book it's on amazon it is on amazon you guys so get the book get it for yourself get it for uh, a family member or friends or whoever just get it it's a good book um to it like i said it has a lot of details in it and as you saw i i wasn't doing really a good job, especially with my lemon tree, you guys. I just kind of really <laughs> messed up on that. So I am just, I was just so happy when she announced that she was dropping a book about gardening and doing it the right way. I was so excited about that. So I had to rush and, 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 and just grateful that she was able to do the interview uh, with me on this. But I want you guys to know is that the next series are going to drop 
probably the first quarter of next year because I want us to get into eating right, taking care of our bodies, mind, body, and soul. It is so important. God only gave you one body, so you need to take care of it. So um, until next time, I want you guys to be blessed and please have a wonderful holiday. And don't forget to get this book, I'm telling you tell your people about this all right okay take care and don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel 